Heyo, welcome back. My name is Christina and I love the baby whisperer Tracy Hogg. Most of my channel are videos about her book, The Baby Whisperer Solves All Your Problems. It's a book I've been following since my daughter was 11 weeks old and it's really helped me a lot. And right now my daughter is 19 months. So it's really <laughs> helped me through most of her life. And I just want to share the ways that it has helped me and things that I've learned from the book with y'all here online to either encourage you as you read the book or to convince you to read it because it's really good. Basically, that is just the point of everything that I do here on this channel. So today's video, we're gonna be talking about a topic I don't see a lot online, but separation anxiety in our babies. So separation anxiety is actually a natural developmental stage in infants. It usually occurs somewhere between seven and nine months of age, but it can happen before that or even after. Essentially, it happens when your baby starts to realize that you are a different person than they are, and that it's actually possible for you to leave the room and not come back. That of course would make you very anxious, especially as you first realize that as a baby. And so it's important in this stage as our children undergo it, that we help them to feel safe and secure. When your child starts to get around this age, you may see signs of them having a more difficult time adjusting to being alone. So if you leave them on the floor in the living room to play or do some tummy time, and you step away for a minute into the kitchen or you just run to the bathroom really quickly, you might see that they start to have a more difficult time. They also might even just have a difficult time with you not holding them. And so you could literally be two or three feet away from them in their eyesight, but if you're not holding them, then they are crying, essentially. And so this actually happened with me to my daughter when she was like five and a half months, closer to six, and I was just absolutely shocked. I knew about separation anxiety because I had read about it in Tracy's book, but I didn't know that she could get it that early. And so I didn't actually like think it was separation anxiety at first. I just assumed it might've been something else. But as time progressed, I realized it definitely was separation anxiety. And so I use these tips that Tracy has in her book to help my daughter feel safe and secure so that she would be more comfortable not always being in my arms or even in my eye line in my eye line, yeah. So the way that I saw separation anxiety in my daughter the most was actually during her wake time. And it would be especially while I was trying to do something like a chore, cleaning up or cooking, just something where I wasn't right there and that she couldn't be in my arms or she couldn't be right next to me. But you can also see separation anxiety happen during naps or at bedtime. And this is a little different from when you're sleep training for the first time and they have a more difficult time with you leaving the room. If you are doing a sleep training technique like pick up, put down, then you probably won't see it as much. But if you know it's at the seven month point and you have sleep trained your child with pick up, put down and all of a sudden they're having a more difficult time with you leaving the room, then that could be separation anxiety. But it's different from if you're sleep training using a cry out method and you notice that they are a little more fearful when you leave. So doing a cry out method can cause, I mean it does cause anxiety in your baby and it could probably trigger some early separation anxiety as well. Especially if you are seeing this on the earlier side around four or five months and it's while you're sleep training, you're definitely going to see your baby be anxious when you put them in their crib and leave the room. And that could even bleed into the rest of your day as well. I do have a video that I posted recently about uh, the dangers of doing cried out sleep training and how it can kind of break your trust with your child. It's not a sleep training method I've ever done before. I know it does work with some parents, but I stick to pick up, put down, which is Tracy Hogg's method. And I have videos that talk about that as well. So once you've identified in your baby that whatever they're going through is most likely separation anxiety, then there are lots of tips that Tracy lays out in her book 
that can help you not prolong the separation anxiety. So it's going to happen and it might be really obvious, it might not even be that obvious. But the most important thing is that it doesn't go on longer than it needs to and it doesn't develop into actual anxiety. So there's eight tips that Tracy lists out. Tip number one is that when your child is crying and they want you to come to them and comfort them, it's important not to always pick them up, but to get down on their level. And this is to help teach them that where they are is a safe place. If you are a baby and you're crying on the floor because you're nervous that your mom has left you and she comes and picks you up and takes you away from the place, then she's kind of teaching you that that wasn't a safe place for you to be. And she's reinforcing the fact that if you were crying, then you got rescued essentially. So it's important that we're not teaching our children that we're rescuing them from being alone, but that we want to help make them feel comfortable being alone, even if it's just for a few minutes. So if your baby is on a floor or on the floor or in a chair, it it's good to get down on their level, make them feel like the place that they are is safe and secure. You can still then pick them up at that level to comfort them. I always would have to pick up my daughter, like I couldn't comfort her just by being next to her. But I wouldn't be like swooping her up out of her chair or swooping her up from the floor. I would be next to her and I would say, it's okay to be here. This is a safe place, you're okay here. I'm just stepping away for a little bit. That leads us to tip number two is responding in a rel relaxed and upbeat manner. So if you are panicked and worried, then they're going to pick up on that and they're going to feel like you're kind of reinforcing their fear, especially if you feel fearful as well. And this kind of bleeds into tip number three, which is watch your tone of voice. So you really don't want to mirror their panic. Obviously, as moms, we want our children to stop crying as soon as possible because we want to meet their needs as soon as possible. So if your child is crying and you are freaking out and you don't know why, you don't want to mirror that. That's just going to prolong the crying and it's going to teach them that they might actually have something to cry about. So it's important that when we respond to our child that we are relaxed and that we are showing them the energy that we want them to have. That they can be where they are alone and be relaxed and be happy. And obviously you don't want to be fake about it. You just want it to be natural. You don't want to put on this weird facade or this really high-pitched voice that no, you should be happy. Uh, we don't want to force emotions onto our child, but we do want to just help them feel safe and to feel comfortable where they are. So as soon as you have done that and they are calmed down, it's helpful to distract them. So if they were trying to play in the living room, maybe just a couple minutes of some independent play while you just ran to the kitchen to grab yourself a snack, you can come to the living room, get down on their level, be relaxed, help them calm down, and then distract them. Say that there's toys, remind them, hey, here's your favorite toy that you were just playing with. Let's play together. And don't leave immediately. Just sit there with them and see if you can distract them from the fear that they just experienced by playing with a toy or reading a book or doing something that they enjoy. Tip number five is never resort to controlled crying. So I did mention this when I just mentioned sleep training earlier, that would be like a cry it out technique. And you don't wanna do this during their wake time either. If you just leave them in the room and you leave, and they cry it out essentially and you just don't come back because you want them to just eventually get tired of crying and get used to being alone. Essentially, you're kind of teaching them that their fears are right and that you're not gonna come back because that is their concern is you've gone, you're a different person than they are. Are you gonna come back and be there for them? And you don't wanna teach them that at any given point you can just get up and walk away from the room and they have no idea when to expect you back. You do want to come into the room, be in their line of sight, and get as close to them as you can to help comfort them and teach them that if they do need something, you are there for them. It's also just important around this age uh, to play peekaboo. So that's her tip number six. Developmentally, peekaboo is a really good way of teaching your child about object permanence, that just because they can't see something, like if it's hidden, 
behind your hands, that that doesn't mean you're not there. So just because you're in the other room using the bathroom, it doesn't mean you've just totally vanished and you're gone forever. It means you're just in the other room and you're gonna come back. So playing peekaboo with our children in any situation just regularly helps them understand that you are always there. And around this age as well, you might be able to hide things under blankets and they might be able to actually lift up the blanket and find the thing that you hid. And that is them learning that, oh, that thing didn't just disappear forever. So doing activities like that throughout the day with them will help them to feel more comfortable with you leaving. And you can even play peekaboo with your entire body, like you could hide behind the couch and then pop up. Things like that that just teach, hey, I'm still here. <laughs> Tip number seven is to walk around just so they get used to short periods of time without you. You don't want to always be constantly at their side because again, that's reinforcing the fact that if you were to leave, that would be a very odd and strange thing that is going to happen. You don't want to purposely leave the room for an extended period of time. That would be controlled crying, but you do want to get them used to the fact that you do have your own body and you can walk into the other room and come back. So it's important that uh, you aren't afraid of doing that. That if you just need to grab something in the pantry, you know that they're gonna cry when you get up and do it. You should do it anyway, because that just exposes them to the idea that you will go and come back, especially if you know it'll be a short period of time. That is a way that they learn. And yes, they're gonna cry and be upset and you know that it's anxiety, but they do need that in order to learn and make the connection that when you leave, you come back and you come back pretty quickly. Now tip number eight is like my favorite and I think it's like the most practical tip and I still like have to do it. <laughs> but when you leave the house, if you're leaving your child with a caregiver or another parent, you're going to work or out on a date or anything, you want to make it a point to say goodbye and you want your child to watch you leave. You don't want to just sneak out and disappear and not cause a scene. You want to tell them, hey, I'm leaving, I'm going to be back, goodbye, I'm gonna get in this car and drive away, and you can watch. And they might absolutely hate that, they might scream and cry the whole time, but they will be fine as soon as you're gone. I promise. <laughs> I still do this with my daughter at 19 months. Every time my husband and I go out on a date, and we're saying goodbye. We always make it a point to have a very formal goodbye. My daughter is usually a little uncomfortable for a few minutes, but every babysitter we've ever had says that within like a minute or two, once we're totally gone, she's fine. And she's always been fine. <laughs> there, of course, maybe when she was younger, she had a more difficult time with it and maybe cried a little longer, but she got used to the fact that we were gone because she knows where we went. She knows we got in the car and we left. And that's something I do when my husband leaves for work every morning as well, is we have a whole ritual where we go out and we say goodbye to him in the car. And sometimes my daughter is really sad and she doesn't want her dad to leave. Sometimes she thinks it's fun to say goodbye and watch him drive away, but she's always okay and she always knows where he is. And she'll even ask me in the middle of the day, like she'll hear a noise outside and say, dad, dad. And I'm like, no, that's not him. Remember he went to work. And she totally gets that and she's made that connection. And so what we're trying to avoid here with saying goodbye is losing trust. If you just sneak off because you don't want to experience your child crying, you don't want to give the babysitter a hard time, then you're gonna teach them that you could just disappear and they don't know where you went. So if the last place they saw you was standing in the kitchen and they go and look at a toy and then turn back to the kitchen, and you're gone and they would crawl over to the kitchen or you know they if they can if they're mobile enough and you're just completely gone and they have no idea where you went that is so much like more fearful than if they actually see you walk out the door and even if they are crying and they seem uncomfortable it's totally more worth it in the long run to make sure that they know where you went so those are Tracy's eight tips I think that they're really great and you just really have to stick with it. It will pass, natural separation anxiety will pass. I think for my daughter it was really bad for the first week. It was so bad. Like I thought my daughter completely changed personalities. 
I was so concerned. <laughs> I didn't know if my life would ever be the same. It was after we stopped sleep training. It was around the time we started solids. And I was just like, oh my goodness, I, I can't catch a break. <laughs> uh, but then she went back to normal within a week or two. And everything's been fine since. And obviously, you know, she has her ups and downs, as all children do. But it really is going to pass. And your child, if you do all these things, will trust that you will return and that you will come back. And that really helps your relationship with them. And it really helps to build that trust. So that comes to the end of our video. Kind of a short one today. But essentially, if you liked it, please give it a thumbs up. If you have any questions or comments, please leave those below. I'd love to hear any other suggestions for videos as well. I do want to say I am currently 34 weeks pregnant with my second child. So I'm probably not going to do very many videos in the next coming weeks. And I do plan, depending on how everything goes, to do more videos once my second baby is born and do those videos of doing Tracy Hogg's techniques with her to help give more people a visual of what it's like, especially when it comes to doing things with sleep in those first newborn months. So that is my plan for now, and we'll see what happens. Obviously things change and the newborn time is just crazy, but that's something that I'm looking forward to doing, especially because I didn't get to use Tracy Hogg's book with my daughter for the first 11 weeks of her life, and I'm really excited to actually apply those principles for those weeks. <laughs> so that's something I'm looking forward to. So if you want to hear more about all of that and to see those videos as they come out, please subscribe so that you can get updated when new videos are posted online. Thanks for watching.